start recording. Here we are. So I'll go through the policy. Uh, Linux certification meetings involve participation by industry competitors, and it is the intention of the Linux Foundation to conduct all of its activities in accordance with the applicable enterprise and competition laws. It is therefore extremely important that attendees adhere to meeting agendas and be aware of and not participate in any activities that are prohibited under applicable U.S. state, federal, or foreign antitrust and competition laws. Examples of types of actions that are prohibited at Linux Foundation meetings and in connection with activities are described in the Linux Foundation antitrust policy. If you have questions about this message, please contact your company council, or if you are a member of the Linux Foundation, feel free to contact Andrea Up the Grove at the firm Get Me Up the Grove LLP, which, pro which provides legal counsel to the Linux Foundation. Apple Ledger is committed to creating a safe and welcoming community for all. For, all, for more information, please visit our Apple Ledger conference. Here we are for the very last meeting of 2020. And uh, we have a uh, pleasure to, to, to guest Stefan de Meyer, this morning, and Roland uh, Cortivo. So guys, I'll leave it on to you to have a speech about the electronic promissory notes and bills for the change. So I'd like to have the presentation and have the speech. So first of all, welcome uh, to both of you. Nice to have you here this morning. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Andrea. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, as uh, Roland mentioned before, I will start uh, showing uh, our electronic promissory notes as a use case for what uh, Roland presents uh, later, the, the so-called Swiss trust chain. So I, will, uh, I think you should see my screen in the back now. Maybe uh, just a, a few words uh, to myself as a as a person, I'm a co-founder and a chief product officer of uh, FGX. Uh, otherwise, I'm an attorney at Law Notary Public in, in Switzerland. So I uh, worked uh, a while in the insurance industry, and then I moved to academia for a, a PhD on blockchain and uh, securities law. So how can you digitally transfer rights by using uh, blockchain-based uh, crypto tokens? And uh, did this, I finished uh, 2018, and then I worked a couple of years with uh, MME, so one of the, the major fintech law firms in Switzerland. Uh, and we, with, uh, we have been around 90 lawyers at MME, and 30 of them are uh, purely focused on uh, blockchain and DLT projects. And uh, so a lot of tokenization, DLT trading uh, systems, etc. And now, as of uh, 2019, uh, together with my colleagues, I'm, I'm focused on uh, one, one of the most paper-based instruments in the world, the, the promissory note. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to, to uh, show you uh, the current status of FGX and uh, how you can uh, use those uh, electronic promissory notes. So the claim is very simple. FGX is an infrastructure provider. We enable corporations to issue, sign, and transfer those electronic promissory notes, which we call e-notes, therefore uh, making liquidity accessible. And to, to also show you the kind of the, the overall picture uh, and the, the starting point for our promissory notes is uh, on the one side, the, the trade finance gap. Um, I, I, all of you, uh, I'm quite sure are uh, fully aware of this the trade finance gap. You have an uh, a complex uh, fragmented system in the area of trade finance. Uh, it's mostly relates to certain jurisdictions. It's um, uh, and also some from time to time an outdated infrastructure. So there, this is the, the trouble on the one side and on the other side you have the investment plight that a lot of, especially institutional investors seeking for uh, investment opportunities. And uh, in the past, especially in the past, we had this very nice and powerful instrument of the promissory note. Um, the promissory note is, uh, as you know, an unconditional promise to pay, and this, it has uh, several substantial advantages. So first of all, you have a globally standardized legal framework. So the law in regard to promissory note is almost the same, be it in the US, be it in Switzerland, uh, be it in Asia, or, or even in Africa. 
that's due to the fact that this instrument is so old during the time we, we had a, a global standardization. Uh, secondly, this instrument is both a payment and a credit instrument. So you can pay by using uh, a promissory note, but it can also be used as a, as a credit instrument. And thirdly, it has a very high uh, level of legal enforceability. That's because of the fact that it's an unconditional promise to pay. So if you use this instrument in a supply chain finance scenario, or as an alternative for, for example, factoring, it's unrelated to the underlying contract. So you as a holder of this promissory note, you are sure that you receive uh, the money and you do not have to care whether the, the, the underlying contract was uh, fulfilled or not. And then fourthly, of course, it's simple, as you will see it, that's generic and it's a transferable, tradable instrument. So these are the advantages. Then on the other side, it, in the meanwhile, it almost died out because of these disadvantages, the law prescribed a paper certificate. So you need the paper. You also needed a handwritten signature. You had to send it by post. It was not forgery proof. So uh, in conclusion, it was extremely cumbersome to use uh, those promissory notes, um, mainly because of the legal uh, basis. And what is now changing is precisely on the one side, uh, this legal basis, and on the other side, also uh, the, the technology. And now we have uh, some substantial influence um, or uh, sub substantial um, associations and consortia focusing on the digitization of uh, promissory notes and negotiable instruments in general. For example, uh, ITFA has an initiative, uh, BAF is uh, focusing precisely on this based on uh, Delaware law. So we see uh, now a global tendency in regard to digitization of uh, these instruments. And in the meanwhile, we also have a proper legal basis allowing to issue and transfer those uh, instruments electronically. And uh, we, um, as of 2019, we filled an infrastructure and also a platform precisely to issue, trade, sign, and transfer uh, those uh, e-notes. Um, where can you use those uh, e-notes? That's then the, the obvious uh, next question. Our focus are not only corporations which still use those promissory notes in uh, trade relations. We are convinced that uh, this promissory note, this e-note, can also replace certain or quite a lot of uh, trade finance approaches uh, currently existing in the area of uh, factoring, reverse factoring, but also in regard to dynamic discounting. And it could even be used as a, as a replacement or uh, as a substitute uh, for a commercial papers. So we are believe that e-notes have the potential to disrupt certain approaches. And on the other side, as it's a very simple global instrument, which is also cheap to use. We're convinced that we can wide the global market uh, by providing uh, e-notes. Um, what use cases uh, do we anticipate? So in essence, there are two different use cases we distinguish. On the one side, the trade loan, it's a kind of a more corporate, also could be a more corporate finance transaction. Here, the, the use case is very simple. You as a corporation, you issue uh, the e-note, you sell it to an investor for a certain discount, and then the investor can either wait until due date and then he, he uh, gets paid, or it's a transferable negotiable instrument. He can transfer it uh, to any uh, other party at uh, any time. The other major use case uh, from our perspective, also one of the, the most promising use cases is uh, below in the supply chain finance area. So here you always have an underlying uh, trade relationship, a buyer and a supplier. And then the buyer in this scenario is uh, issuing an e-note, he's paying its supplier by using this e-note. And then the supplier can in an integrated uh, process directly further transfer this e-note to an investor. And uh, from our perspective, that's a win-win-win 
scenario. So from the perspective of the buyer, what you can do, you have two uh, steering possibilities. On the one hand, you can vary with the due date of the e-note. So the e-note due date can be after the due date of the invoice. So this means you can extend your uh, payment terms and your payment goals very, very flexibly and easily. That's uh, one perspective. Secondly, you can also uh, earn a discount. So e-note face value can be lower than the face value of the e-note. So this is the, the, the steering perspective of the buyer. Then the supplier in the middle, he has an obvious interest. He directly receives liquidity. He does not have to, to wait 30, 60, 90 days, uh, depending on the jurisdiction. And then uh, thirdly, the investor on the right side, he holds an unconditional promise to pay. So in contract to factoring, where you have to care about the underlying trade contract, whether it was fulfilled or not, you have an unconditional promise to pay with a very high level of uh, legal enforceability. You can enforce it in currently 165 countries in arbitration uh, model, and uh, it's a transferable asset. So you can uh, create the originate to distribute model. So you have a, a lot of flexibility also in, in this regard. So from our perspective, this instrument, this promissory note in an electronic form has a huge potential for the, the supply chain finance market. Um, how is our uh, tech base uh, looking like? So as you see here, we are based on uh, what is called the Swiss trust chain. It's, it's the Swiss trust chain. It's uh, Roland will explain this uh, later on in uh, more detail. Uh, it's a solution, it's a hyperledger uh, fabric DLT with nodes at Swisscom in the banking zone and uh, Swiss Post in, also in a, in a banking grade environment. So it's a, a redundant system. Um, our users do not have to care about um, operating their own nodes. At the same time, we, we um, can say it's a redundant system with a very high level of, uh, of data integrity. So we, we have all the advantages uh, of a closed private system with a high level of uh, data integrity. And also we have a, a very trustworthy partners with uh, Swisscom and uh, Swiss Post. So every electronic uh, promissory note is stored on uh, this infrastructure. What we also integrated is uh, a qualified electronic signature. So in our case, just click and accept is not sufficient. So we integrated this um, uh, legal equivalent to the handwritten signature based on the European EIDA standard. And every e-note and every transaction is signed by the parties with their uh, respective qualified electronic signature. That's very easy. You receive then on your mobile phone when you uh, sign on the platform uh, a short message, you insert the PIN code, and then by doing this, uh, all the uh, e-notes are signed uh, by using uh, this signature. And you can also even have a mass signing procedure so that you, as a, as a major corporation, can use uh, 150 e-notes at the same time, making it uh, very uh, efficient. Um, then the, the last aspect, how can you use our current system? Um, we have three entry points. So on the one side, we, we have the platform. You can log in on the platform. Uh, on the other side, we provide white label solutions. And then thirdly, uh, this, is, this is something we, we do um, with a large uh, German uh, multi-billion uh, corporation. We have the possibility to directly from SAP generate the instruments. The, the nice aspect with SAP is that there is all, already standard functionality for, for promissory note, but it's still focused on the paper instrument. So at the end, you have a print template SAP is generating. And what we do is we docking with SAP, which then we take this, uh, this uh, print file and then we convert it to the electronic promissory note. And then you come to our system, sign it, and then uh, those instruments are tran transferred to first supplier and then uh, to, the, to the investor. And uh, this is uh, especially nice because then as a large corporation, you can still have all your automated process, accounting is automated, the invoices are automatically also marked as paid by promissory note, it directly goes into your, also your, your payment system. 
So uh, we, we can provide uh, by using SAP a very high uh, level of automation. Um, here, in regard to the um, specific aspects of our promissory note, uh, what we, for example, have integrated also is an ISIN number. So especially in the more uh, corporate finance money market uh, sector, an ISIN number can be, be valuable for uh, institutional investors. So they can, uh, this facilitates uh, the, the bookkeeping of the, the instruments. Um, we have, I, I quickly mentioned it before, an arbitration framework ensuring that the instruments can be enforced in 165 countries. So the, the elegant aspect with our e-note is we have one legal framework allowing the electronic issuance and transfer of the instrument. Then we combine it with an arbitration scheme and this arbitration scheme allows then the enforceability of the instrument almost in every country in, in the world. The, the last country which uh, ratified the, the New York Convention in this regard uh, was uh, the Kingdom of Tonga. So even in the Kingdom of Tonga, you're then able to use this e-note and uh, to enforce it in case um, that the maker is not paying uh, the, the face value. Then maybe the, the last aspect to, to where do we, we stand? Uh, we, we started uh, 2019, we, we created a, a prototype for a, a demo it to a large German uh, car manufacturer. We since then already onboarded uh, a couple of uh, large corporations, uh, especially in Europe, but, but also abroad. We have a one Swiss bank, which is onboarded uh, on the system. We have a patent pending for the combination of uh, um, private permission DLT, the way we authorize corporations and, why we, and how we integrated the, the qualified electronic signature. Uh, one of the next steps is then uh, we will also integrate a global payment service provider. Um, we are now in the, the step of closing this contract so that we do not only support the, the title side with the promissory note, but also the, the money uh, side. Um, I think we can skip this uh, here, um, at this point, I suggest I would uh, hand over to you, Roland. Uh, you are for us uh, a very important uh, person. You're um, enabling the secure storing uh, of our e-notes on your uh, redundant system at uh, Swisscom and Swiss Post. So I would hand over to you. All right, then. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you very much, Stefan, to give me um also the chance to present our infrastructure offering we do have. Just uh, switch the screen. Sorry. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, we can see it. Yes, we see. All right. So I don't want to do it uh, too long then. Let's see if I can just. All right. So yeah, what we do, or what we what we've done, actually just looked it up in 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 Google. So uh, it was in December two thousand eighteen that um, we announced this uh, offering uh, in Switzerland. It was uh, December two thousand eighteen. Was the Global Forum in Basel, Switzerland? We announced this private uh, DLT infrastructure. So we came together with Post some three years ago and really had this idea to. Uh, to provide in Switzerland a distributed network, so a private permissioned uh, network. We chose Hyperledger Fabric to do this. It's um, today um, we do have we do have applications running on it, so we offer it also for proof of concepts, but also for uh, enterprise applications. It's run in uh, tier four. 
data center. So you have, we have this, that's like the highest tier you can get. So we always talk about enterprise grade, it's even bank grade. So it's running at post finance. That's the financial uh, branch of post, of the post group. And it's running in Swisscom banking data center. So there's um, two partners and each has two nodes. So we're having a total of four nodes at the moment. We do are in, in an evaluation of a third partner. So um, I can also publicly uh, not announce the third partner yet, but we are in close talks with six. So the Swiss, um, the Swiss uh, exchange um, and there's a good chance that they might join this and this would also add up, add up to give us some more traction than in the market. So any, any um, enterprise that is having uh, real special requirements concerning either security, data storage, regulation, um, can just onboard on our infrastructure. So it's open, we are open for any international startup for uh, abroad for any uh, enterprise and of course in Switzerland. So the data is stored in Switzerland. It is, um, we are two trusted party and will soon be three participants in this network. It's based on Hyperledger Fabric 1.4 at the moment, but we are just in the middle of upgrading the platform. So by February, we are on Hyperledger Fabric 2.2. Just to give you a little bit more insight about what we do in the blockchain sector in general, we do, we do have a portfolio of services and solutions we are offering. What we are looking right now is the Swiss trust stream at the very bottom on the left. So that's part of our basic infrastructure services. One is um, called Swiss trust chain, just presented. The next one is network as a service. That's also Hyperledger Fabric. Um, it's rather a sandbox. It's run by Swisscom only. And the third one is node as a service or a gateway we offer to regulated financial institutions to offer um, coins or access to public chains to their clients. And the next layer um, is um, a portfolio of solutions we offer. I think one that's quite obvious is uh, digital assets. So we just launched, uh, we were the initiator also of Daura in Switzerland. Daura is a platform uh, share, tokenization platforms for share. Um, so that's one thing we did. And of course, we, we've done quite some, some uh, proof of concepts and also projects with digital objects and, and uh, in combination of IoT, smart contracts as well. The newest, the newest offering we do have um, is electronic seals. So basically you, you certify a document on the blockchain and later on in a use case allows a third party to verify the authenticity of this uh, document on the block. And last but not least, also a decentralized identity management. So for all, for all these use cases in this industry, if you, if you follow a, a, a decentralized approach, you definitely need also a solution uh, to handle uh, your identities and, and of course, identity related uh, data. So for that, we have a product that is called SSI gate. If you would be interested in that one, uh, please let me know. All right, just to give you that's, I guess that's the last slide. Um, I just put our references and projects that we did that we did and that we do at the moment on this Swiss trust chain. Um, just put them together on a on the slide right here. So the third one, we've just been looking into FQX and their promissory note, uh, the e-note. We've just seen this one. The first one I mentioned, that's Daura, that's a digital share platform for share registry for capital increase and also voting or proxy services in terms of general assembly. Omera, an interesting customer we do have uh, out of the energy sector. So Switzerland is pushing hard for um, decentralized energy production. And uh, for that, um, Ormeira is offering a platform also for automated billing. One from the public sector. So that's the Compton of Schaffhausen. What we did there is really to, to um, 
as today we are offering this uh, document verification service so that was the first proof of concept we did with the online deck collection register extract so just imagine that you want to want to um, rent an apartment for example and you need you need an extract of your debt collection two projects we are um, running right now so two proof of concepts uh, that are not are not running on the platform yet but uh, are in development one is what we call green coin a very interesting uh, initiative um, we are um, keen really to see this coming out of, of the dark and really go live. That's um, a sustainable marketplace that um, in combination with a near marked stable coin pegged to the Swiss franc, um, the objective there is really to reduce in, uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So a green coin, um, which of course offers the possibility then to just to multiply this and just imagine you would have a, a near marked uh, stable coin for regional or local products could be the same uh, intention and and the last one the trust wallet or the civil wallet so that's a digital wallet we would like to uh, to offer in switzerland of course um, for personal documents like a driving license or a vaccination or a certificate and then, of course, I mean, if you look at all these initiatives, especially the last two, you would have a green coin or a stable coin or an earmarked stable coin. You would have a trust, uh, trust wallet for personal documents. You add this up with, for example, Daura, where you would have a tokenized shares. If you bring this all together, um, I think that's our vision to have all uh, tokenized um, objects tokenized uh, objects uh, shares and and documents all in one place so that's really the, the vision we have yeah that's all from my side i guess we would be open uh, to also get some questions from from all our participants if that's okay it is thank you roland thank you stefan was very nice uh, and very interesting presentations from both of you. Is there anybody who would like to make questions to Stefan and to Roland? Mm -hmm. All right. Any burning questions, something you want to know? Maybe also some. Uh, yes. I have a question is, uh, thank you for this, very interesting. Um, do you have experience on, from a legal point of view, how, how you convince uh, companies to, if mm -hmm. they go to court, um, to have the same validity as, as paper? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm asking because that's something I, I used to face uh, myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's an that's an excellent uh, question. Um, so we first have chosen our uh, legal framework very carefully. Uh, also, the three out of four co-founders are uh, attorneys at law. Uh, focused, uh, some of them are very reputable uh, in the area of uh, securities law. Um, so this is one aspect, and then uh, we wanted to avoid the situation that, for example, a, a local Italian court would have then to check the legal validity of an instrument which might be based on a certain uh, US uh, state law. And that's mm. why we combine those instruments with an arbitration uh, clause. So every e-note has an uh, arbitration clause. Uh, the, the arbitration is then uh, based in Switzerland. And the nice aspect of this arbitration framework is that there's a, a New York convention from uh, 1958 on the enforceability of uh, arbitral awards. And this, uh, this uh, convention has been ratified by currently 165 countries. So therefore, it's a very easy process if you're holder of this uh, unconditional promise to pay you first go to the arbiter and then as it's unconditional, you just have to prove that the other party, the maker has not paid. Then you receive the arbitral award and this award can then be enforced as a state uh, court decision in all of those 165 countries. And therefore you have a process uh, which also facilitates uh, the enforcement 
and uh, making the, the, the instruments be, be usable on a global scale. So that's in, in essence, uh, it's also based substantially on the, the arbitration model. Uh, so you nonetheless, know, you know. I, just as a, as a last point, I also have to highlight that we are, this, this E node is not a contractual rule based model. So there are certain projects also in the market, they create those uh, contractual relationships and then you contractually define, you would handle the instrument as it were uh, a promissory note, but we are really using the, the, the proper legal basis mm -hmm for this instrument and that's also an, an advantage did, did right. it answer uh, your your question no it, it does so you're not following the english law you have this uh, no, uh, but, arbitration uh, yes uh, but based on the on uk law it's at the moment not possible to yeah, yeah. Um, even transfer those instruments electronically okay that, interesting. That's also where, where it for yeah. Uh, yeah, is is focusing on on the moment. They they also uh, intend to to change uh, UK law. We have a different uh, legal basis, more focused on the US. But as you combine it with those uh, global enforcement scheme, you can you really uh, use it on a global scale. So we do not have to wait until UK adopted any changes in law in regard to uh, electronic negotiable instruments. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Stefan, one thing I would like to ask you, we're talking about promissory notes, which are usually, you know, the, the instrument on which open accounts are based, especially when an ECA uh, steps in the picture. What about uh, bills of exchange? Do you deal with those instruments as well? Yes, that's, an, that's also a very, very good question. Um, at, at the beginning, we intended to, of course, support both uh, bills of exchange and promissory notes. Then uh, based on our uh, extended legal analysis of, of the, the, the underlying legal basis, we decided to focus on promissory notes first, because uh, there are some uh, legal advantages which you have in regard to promissory notes, which are not existing for, for bills of exchange. Uh, however, in our supply chain finance scenario, uh, based on the flow we implemented, you can use the promissory note as a bill of exchange. It's just you you have it first issued from the maker, in this case, usually the buyer to the supplier, and then you have an endorsement then uh, to the investor. So, uh, but uh, you can use this, uh, this instrument in precisely the same constellation as a bill of exchange. Uh, and that's to, to, uh, one last point uh, to add uh, in uh, recent time, we will also be able uh, to support a uh, real bill of exchange. Uh, you're muted, Andrea. Sorry, didn't notice that. Sorry. Uh, I was asking this because under different scenarios, you know, some countries that do not recognize promissory notes, others, they don't with bills of exchange. It's quite a patchwork in terms of scenario. And often you try to issue drafts, which means bills of exchange, basically, yes. when under a documentary credit outlook that's why i was asked this you know yes. it's not the same thing you know yes uh, sir. Really totally agree. yeah I mean, I mean here here we're also um a bit dependent on the the legal uh, basis there's also this this one initiative from uncitral with uh, the model on electronic transferable records so there we, we also will have a, a, an additional legal basis we, we can use and this is an, an evolvement which, yeah, is, in the future, we, we are convinced that there are a lot of different legal frameworks we can use to, to issue and uh, transfer those instruments electronically. Challenge to convince everybody to adopt the model laws, which, you know. Yes, precisely. That's the, the challenge at the moment. Uh, as far as Beautiful. I know, it's just uh, Bahrain, uh, which adopted uh, this, this model law and uh, there are a lot of other countries uh, intending it, but... But yeah. at the moment, just one. Just yes, precisely. Just yeah. one. Based on place. From the attendance. Yeah. All right, any other questions? He needs to know something from myself or from Stefan. Just answered one on education, so I hope uh, Andrew this helps you.
Yeah. All right. Well, I guess everyone's happy with the content we provided. So <laughs> that's good. We, we personally, we, we are happy. I mean, uh, thanks for yeah. the presentation. Uh, uh, interesting one. So you shut up. Okay. All right. Maybe a general question. So how do you see 20, like 2020 and going into 2021 in terms of blockchain and, and, and your adoption, you're seeing the kind of traction you're getting? And what are the challenges? So what, okay, so what year would you like to know? 2022 or, or 21? 20, 2021 or 2022, whatever, right? So how are you seeing? Okay. How do you see the traction? How do you see? We, see we, we think we've got a five-year journey. Where are we on this journey from your perspective? Um, from my point of view, I guess um, okay. We did we did have we did have some sort of a, of a little bit uh, of a of a halt. Now you can say in the whole development of the market, of course, due to this uh, COVID nineteen crisis. That's quite obvious. So a lot of um, um, we've seen just some real specific cases like this uh, vaccination uh, certificate, for example, that. Uh, that was really a big now news and everything. But besides this, of course, the market slowed down a little bit uh, in general. But besides this, I think I think what we see is that that the period now, um, or, or really um, the hyper, is this hype curve. I think what we what we've seen is really a lot of um, I would say building of consortium. What we've seen is really um, technical proof of concepts also some uh, solving or, or some proof of concepts uh, turning around legal legal aspects, just the one uh, outlined by Stefan. And then of course, um, uh, what we see now is really that the try and error period is over. So I think what we see, what we will see in the, in the near future, definitely um, next year and then the year after, uh, I will expect to see more uh, um, projects and then real cases going productive that will add value to the user. So really adding value and also also I think we've we've, we've solved the, the technology issue. I think today it's not a big deal to have a chain running up and running to tokenize some objects. I think we've, we've solved some legal issues, especially in Switzerland. Like um, I think we have uh, uh, the lawmakers in Switzerland. I think they're very fond now of this technology. We're moving forward there. So I don't see uh, too much obstacles in, in this area. But where I still see the biggest challenge is really the, the nice use cases, the good business models, really uh, also players, stakeholders uh, giving the chance to, to earn money. Because uh, blockchain basically is an efficiency case. Uh, and and then of course, um, where also I see a potential is really if you combine blockchain with other deep tech. So let's say we will see more cases with blockchain or DLT uh, combining with IoT to really make make these transactions you save on the blockchain to make them uh, measurable. So whatever you put on the blockchain, you could say okay, it's it's somehow measured, it's verified. And the same goes for uh, blockchain and AI. So whatever you can't measure out there, at least you can validate this with some sort of AI um, uh, mechanism. So that's my point of view. Maybe Stefan, you want to add? Yeah, to to, to add in, in this regard, I, I fully agree with what you. But you uh, described Roland. I think the the market has been consolidating uh, within the last month, maybe even even years. I think now in the meanwhile, if you're using a DLT or a blockchain, the, the hype period, this is obviously uh, over. So you really have to focus on the, the use case. And uh, it's not just that you're using a blockchain that, that you will be uh, successful. And in, in, our, in our case, we, we see this quite direct. I mean, our customers are mainly large global corporations, um, maybe even fi also financial institutions and investors on the other side. And they do not care whether we use a uh, blockchain. They just care whether it's uh, secure, whether it's easy, whether you really uh, fulfill an economic uh, need, whether it has a purpose. 
So this, I think these projects will be successful, which are very close to a real uh, commercial use case. And uh, you have to, to weigh up between a visionary, what you will achieve three, five, maybe even seven years uh, ahead and what you really can provide in, in short time. Yeah. So I think that's the uh, that's interesting. So I think there's still too much hype really to say, okay, there's blockchain in it. And to be honest, yeah, you're completely right users don't care. So nobody really cares today if you say, okay, I, I bought the book on Amazon and it's based on the internet. So people will say, yeah, it's nice. We know it would be probably the same like in, in, in five years, people would say the in blockchain, yeah, it's, it's, it's there, it's here to stay and it's here to be used. So uh, so you see the same so I guess one other challenge is really interoperability. I didn't mention that one. So I guess we still have a lot of technologies and, and not to forget it's not only the the intra-chain uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms that somehow we have to solve so we will uh, definitely also i mean these legacy systems all the erp systems uh, there's they're also here to stay they will not they will not go away uh, quickly just uh, so so there we will have to bridge the new world and the old world same same for that one and trust i think that I think trust is still, uh, I mean, blockchain somehow solves the trust gap that we have in all these electronic uh, real-time transaction and, and trust will, will even, the need for trust, for trustful networks will increase. I think in the time that we are right now, we see a lot of fraud happening. We see a lot of um, uh, cybersecurity initiatives going on. So trust will definitely, the need for trust will definitely increase. Yeah, any other questions? You, Last Roland, question. you touched very Can you hear me, Roland? Nope. Sorry. Roland. Yeah, can you hear me now? Better. You, you touched very good points. I mean, when you mentioned uh, the interaction between blockchain, artificial intelligence, and IoT, that's very good point. Uh, sticking to trade and trade finance, I mean, this is, uh, will be, in my opinion, the real deal. Mm -hmm. Connected also with the interoperability. You just have lots of initiatives, but they have to talk to each other, let's say so, in an efficient way, uh, in order to recreate what's going on in the physical world right now. So the secret, maybe, recipe, it's a good mixture of those uh, issues that she mentioned without violating what is the present says, which is largely based on abstractness and, you know, in um, independence principles. That has always been my core interest, you know, being on the, on the legal and commercial side of the, uh, of the international trade. The secret will be when all this, I mean, a good point for success in the future will be the interactions of these technologies uh, without, you know, not disrupting, but evolving the present setup uh, in a digital way. So you, you touch very good points when you, when you include your speech. You know, I mean, uh, I do appreciate these secrets over there. The future lies in the interaction of these technologies. Blockchain is a good point, it's a good technology, but alone it cannot solve the whole stuff, the whole problem. Yeah, it has to interact. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody it's else, just a very efficient way. It's a very efficient way to have a trustful network to just store, um, you can say, tamper proof transactions. So that's basically it, and the rest has to be solved by other technologies, right? <laughs> All right, so yeah. There's no more question, I guess, for me and Stefan. Uh, we would also thank you for participating and uh, yeah, to really share your interests together with us. Thank you. Great. Actually, maybe just one thing is, is how, if anyone's interested from, in terms of Swisscom and FQX, is, is how will people get in contact with you? What, what kind of, are you looking for a, your sharing today? What kind of connections do you want to make? 
or you just probably Stefan goes first. I just type in my email address in here, yeah. so uh, yeah. probably Stefan can just answer. I, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to connect uh, both via via LinkedIn. Uh, I will also provide my email address, uh, and we can also have a, a bilateral uh, Zoom call or conversations. Mm -hmm. If you see any angles uh, to another case uh, you are working on at the moment, so we're very happy to to also exchange ideas uh, to to uh, uh, to become challenged. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to, to exchange. Also, it doesn't necessarily need to be in regard to, to uh, promissory notes or negotiable instruments, but also to any uh, DLT angle in general. Yeah, for me, it's quite short. So the presentation I was showing, we're interested to um, really uh, make our offering. Uh, if, if anyone really wants to take advantage of our offering, whether it's in infrastructure, um, running applications, enterprise grade blockchain applications or just uh, using one of our building blocks on top, like the one I mentioned with the electronic seal for documents, for example, or, or tokenization of assets, then feel free to contact me and uh, or, or one of my colleagues in, in Swisscom blockchain ecosystem. Yeah, great. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. All right. We'll wrap it up. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we, and then if we say goodbye. We just I leave the meeting, leave and give you another 10 minutes just for some uh, work group internal. So. Yeah, and, and have a great Christmas, everybody. Thank yes, you very yes, much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank Take you. care. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.